Everyone, today Jesus comes into Jerusalem for the last time. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. They shouted, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Don't be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. The crowd who had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead were testifying about him. That's why the crowd came to meet him, because they had heard about this sign that he had done. Therefore the Pharisees said to each other, See, you've accomplished nothing. Look, the whole world is following him. And some Greeks were among those who had come up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida and Galilee, and said, made a request, Sir, we want to see Jesus. So chapter 12 of John's Gospel is kind of the transition to the second half of this book. You have the signs, the book of signs and the book of glory is often the way it's divided up. He's already been anointed for his burial by Mary. And here we have this final entry into Jerusalem where he'll be crucified or, as John says, glorified. And the scene in some ways is similar to Matthew, Mark and Luke with the triumphal entry, as we call it, people are waving palm branches, they're quoting the Psalms, they're declaring Jesus, the King of Israel, and Jesus is humbly riding on a donkey, indicating, I think, the kind of king that he intends to be. And one of the big differences is that in John's gospel, Jesus has already cleared the temple. and did that way back in chapter 2 at the start. In the other Gospels, that seems to be what seals the deal on religious leaders wanting to kill him. But here, it's the, the sign of raising Lazarus. That's what has truly made them uh, upset. And so the big question that we're asking through chapter 12 is, what is the end result of Jesus' ministry? What have his signs actually accomplished? Now here, at least, it seems like it's worked. You know, even his enemies are saying, look, the whole world is following him. Uh, the world that God so loved, they're all, they're all on board. So mission accomplished. You know, we even have some Greeks, your Gentiles, that have come to see Jesus that are interested in him. And so obviously this means now Jesus can just become the king of Israel and start implementing his policies to make Israel great again. Well, the world is watching but are they truly seeing? Maybe all of this to this point was to get people's attention so that Jesus could show them what it truly means for God to come in the flesh. That the way of love leads not to a throne, but to a cross. You know, if, if we don't truly believe that his way is the way of saving the world. Do we truly understand who Jesus is? And when I say believe in, I don't just mean, you know, accept that he went to the cross, but believe in the sense of imitate. That when we want to make a positive change in the world, not, not save the world necessarily, what do we do? What kind of leaders do we look to? Do we look to those that do things the way they've always done it? Or do we look to those who imitate the humble way of Jesus, the way that brings the only true liberation.